dear students welcome to my channel topic of this video is image transform this is the first video on this uh, topic in this video i am going to explain what is mean by transform unitary transform orthogonal transform and kronecker product now let us start transform is a basically a mathematical tool which allows us to move an image from one domain to another do domain for example from time domain to frequency domain now why to shift to perform a task in easier and smooth manner and efficient way for example fast computation of convolution and correlation representing the image in a efficient way that highlights the relevant features transform changes representation of signal by projecting it on to set of basis function so basically image transform is nothing but the set of basis function transform do not change information content present in the signal that is every transform is reversible in nature most of the image transform like fourier discrete wavelength uh, give information about the frequency content in an image role in image processing image transform play a crucial role in various image processing task for example enhancement highlighting a specific feature or removing the noise filtering removing the unwanted frequency or component analysis extracting the features and understanding the image content compression representing the image in more efficient way while some transform like fourier focus on frequencies other like wavelet transform offer a time frequency analysis allowing for localization of features in both space and frequency for example fourier transform works on entire image that is at global level and some of the transform works at the local level also the choice of transform depends on specific image processing task and the desired outcome need for transform mathematical convenience transform can represent a complex signal in simple way making calculation and analysis easier this can be particularly efficient for task like convolution correlation extracting more information transform transform can reveal more hidden information in the signal that might not be readily apparent in the special domain this is a very important point this allows for better understanding feature extraction and manipulation of the image data classification of image transform orthogonal sinusoidal non sinusoidal orthogonal basis function based on input signal statistics directional transform but this classification is not only sufficient but for primary level this classification is sufficient orthogonal sinusoidal basis function fourier transform and discrete fourier transform this is for continuous domain this is for the uh, discrete domain that is suitable for image decompose the image into sine and cosine waves of various frequency and providing the information about the frequency content of the image so we can get the information about in which portion of the image or how much low frequency content is present in a image how much low frequency high frequency and different types of frequency discrete cosine transform similarly to dft but focuses on real valued function because all the values in that basis function formula are real and in fourier it is mixture of real plus complex it is often used in image compression like jpeg discrete sine transform similar to dft but uses only sine waves and useful for specific application non sinusoidal orthogonal basis function haar walsh transform hadamard transform haar walsh transform uses a set of square waves basis function useful for edge detection and data compression hadamard transform employs a set of walsh function derived from hadamard matrix used for image encryption and pattern recognition basis function based on the input signal statistics cone law transform that is klt also known as principal component analysis it statistically optimizes the basis function for specific image or signal maximizing the captured variance so we will get the major axis who capture the maximum variance from the image singular value decomposition decomposes a matrix into singular vectors providing information about the data's low rank structures and useful for dimensionality reduction a directional transform half transform identifies the lines and circle in an image by accumulating the words in parameter space and radon transform useful for reconstructing image from projection often used in medical imaging like ct scans first we will say the important that is what is mean by unitary transform a discrete linear transform is unitary if its transform matrix conform to the unitary condition so unitary condition is that that a multiplied 
A into Hermitian matrix is equal to identity matrix. So here A is our transformation matrix which may be Fourier, Walls, Hadamard that is any of the transform matrix and AH is nothing but its Hermitian matrix. Hermitian matrix can be find out by complex conjugate and then transpose. If we multiply this A into A of H is equal to then we will get I. Unitary condition. This condition defines unitary transform. It essentially states that when the transform matrix A is multiplied by its Hermitian then the resulting product is the identity matrix. So if this condition is satisfied then we can say that our transformation matrix is a unitary transform. Transform matrix represents the linear operation of the transform. It encodes how each element in the input signal is combined to create the transform signal. So when we multiply our input signal that is image with the transformation matrix we are extracting the particular component from the input image. Now first problem check whether DFT matrix is unitary or not that is discrete Fourier transform. So this is example is taken by 4 by 4. So this is 4 by 4 DFT matrix. Now we require to calculate its first Hermitian matrix. For Hermitian we require to take the complex conjugate. So when we take the complex conjugate we are getting this minus j is converted to j. This j is minus j. So we are taking the complex conjugate. So in complex conjugate only complex number sign changes and real value remains as it is. After that we are taking the transpose of this matrix. So we are getting the same transpose that is whatever rows are converted to column. So we are getting same. And when we multiply we are getting this matrix. Now this matrix is not normalized but when we keep 4 outside then at that time we are getting this matrix. So this is nothing but what i. And if we multiply this matrix by 1 by square root of 4 then and if we apply the operation we will get the complete identity matrix. So only to do normalization task if we want the answer in a identity matrix. Therefore Fourier transform is a unitary transform. Now if we see the Fourier transform, it is a transformation matrix and we can see that now here uh, don't see the magnitude but see the sign change that is plus or minus. No sign change takes place the zero so it will extract the low frequency component from the image. Now see this 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 continuously sign change the one change second change and third change. So it will extract the high component frequency high frequency component from an image. Now see this this is positive and after that it changed to the negative. So it will extract the components which is having more low frequency component and less high frequency component. Now see this two positive negative then negative and negative to positive. So two changes are there. So it will extract the components in which somewhat higher frequency component are present. Now next is check whether the wall Shadamard matrix is unitary or not. So this is the wall Shadamard matrix for 4 by 4. Now we require to calculate the complex conjugate to calculate the Hermitian matrix but as the complex numbers are not present we are directly applying the function of only the transpose. So we take the transpose. So when we multiply the transpose again we are getting the identity matrix. Again we can see that this is not normalized. So for normalization we just require to multiply 1 by square root of 4 so we will get the I answer. So depend on we sometimes we use normalize sometimes we use, we use not normalize so it will become when we are solving the example. Therefore it proves that Walsh Hadamard transform is also unitary transform. Now see the sequence uh, sequence that is number of sign changes here no sign change so it will extract the purely row frequency component here the 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 continuously sign change so high frequency component and this is nothing but the combination with low and high. So here only one sign change first is positive part then it changed to negative part here positive to negative one change and then again negative to positive to a second change. So in this way they extracting the particular frequency component from an image. Next is check whether Walsh matrix is unitary or not. So this is the Walsh matrix. So Walsh matrix is, is arranged in such a way that uh, from Walsh Hadamard we found the uh, or we can create the Walsh matrix. In Walsh matrix only the sequence is arranged in ascending order. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So in this way they are arranged. When we take the Hermitian matrix at that time as there is no complex number. so the there is no need to take w star w star is equal to w star t so we are taking the 
transpose and when we multiply we are getting the identity matrix again to normalize this we require to multiply here by 1 by square root of 4 therefore Walsh transform is also unitary transform next we will check the orthogonal transform all the orthogonal matrices are unitary this is very important all orthogonal matrices are unitary but not all unitary matrices are orthogonal the key difference lies in the element of the matrix it is generally observed that if orthogonal matrices can have real values entries while unitary matrices can have complex entries so when matrix is orthogonal is unitary uh, all orthogonal matrix is unitary but not all unitary matrix are orthogonal so when unitary matrix if contain the uh, real uh, complex number though it may be orthogonal or it may not be orthogonal if unitary matrix has real valued entries then it is automatically satisfy the condition of orthogonality but if it contains a combination of real plus complex it may be orthogonal or it may not be orthogonal so example of orthogonal transform is Fourier Walsh Walsh Adamat and non-orthogonal transforms are Gaussian and Laplacian transform even Fourier contains the combination of real and complex still it satisfies the condition of orthogonality to check for orthogonality we require to take this is nothing but our transformation matrix which may be Fourier Walsh DCT whatever that is nothing but the transform matrix so A inverse is equal to A transpose if we multiply by A we are getting this A into A inverse is equal to I and A into A transpose means if we multiply transformation matrix and its transpose we should get the I so next example check Walsh Hadamard matrix is unitary or not so this is Walsh Hadamard matrix we take the transpose and when we multiply we are getting the identity matrix this is not normalized but we can do the normalization also therefore Walsh Hadamard matrix is a orthogonal transform next we will see whether Walsh matrix is unitary uh, is orthogonal or not uh, here the question is actually the for orthogonal not for the unitary so whether Walsh matrix is orthogonal or not so we take this Walsh matrix transpose multiplication again it comes as identity uh, therefore it is a orthogonal transform we will check whether DFT matrix is orthogonal or not here the just make the correction this is this is for checking for the orthogonal now this is the matrix of DFT we take the transpose and when we multiply we are getting again the identity matrix their Fourier transform is also orthogonal transform now next important concept in image transform is nothing but the Kronecker product the Kronecker product denoted by this sign is a mathematical operation that combines two matrices into large block matrix it doesn't perform the standard matrix multiplication instead it creates a new block matrix by taking outer product of each element from the first matrix with the entire second matrix so when we will solve the example it is very easy to calculate the Kronecker product where it is used image processing constructing a block matrices for filtering or feature extraction it is used in control theory for representing the dynamics of multi input multi output system machine learning performing the tensor operation like task like multi linear regression or deep learning so here in this such application the Kronecker product is used so basically it is used the, the matrices now this is a simple example of Kronecker product 1 2 3 4 this is 2 by 2 matrix and this is again 2 by 2 matrix so what we will do we will take the first element of the first matrix and we will multiply with the all the elements of the second matrix so 1 into 0 5 6 7 then 2 into 0 5 6 7 then 3 into 0 5 6 7 and 4 into 0 5 6 7 so in this way multiplication takes place and this is the output of Kronecker now here the second matrix is this matrix is 2 by 3 and this matrix second matrix is 4 by 4 now what we are doing we are taking this element multiply with all these elements then we are taking this 4 multiplying with all these elements of this and we are getting the this answer for example minus 4 into all combination so minus 32 plus 36 in this way then we multiply 7 with all matrices we are getting this particular section in this way we are doing and we get the Kronecker product sometimes in exam question comes that prove a Kronecker product b is equal to b product a so this is not satisfied that is a into b is not equal to b into a so we will check 
so this is a and this is b is given so a into b that is the each element of a multiplied with all elements of b and here each element of b is multiplied with all elements of a and if we see the answer that is a kronecker product b and b kronecker product a the answer is not same so the answer is not same so they are not equal so kronecker product of a into b is not equal to b into a so this is all about the introductory concept of image transform that is nothing but what is mean by unitary transform what is mean by orthogonal transform how to perform the kronecker product and what are the different applications of uh, image transform so in the next video i am going to explain walsh hadamard transform in detail thank you